People say that you become who you surround yourself with. This here is my friend Arya, who directed and produced his first hugely successful film, Ambulance, during his first year of film school. You may ask yourself, well, so what? What's the big deal about this? In the New York Film Academy, first year students are asked to create a film. They are provided with basic DSLR cameras to make their films. Arya took a different approach to his short film with the idea of go big or go home. Many people sought out his movie, but he also sought out his own resources to make this happen. He brought on board a director of photography who provided him with professional gear, specifically the RED camera. The RED is a camera that many professional current movies have been filmed with, such as The Amazing Spider-Man and the upcoming new Thor movie. A composer from London, Ian Arbor, found interest in the project and wanted to compose a score for the movie. Not only did Arya get these resources, he also sought out resources that aren't available to students ever. He contacted a company to rent an ambulance and two police cars. This company requires a million dollar insurance deductible for their vehicles. The owner of the company saw the passion and determination of Arya and not only allowed him to rent these vehicles, but rent them at a reasonable rate. His passion carried on with him to make it possible for him to film his movie at the Linda Vista Hospital, which charges students a rate that was almost his entire budget. Once the movie was made, he had the chance to screen it at the Warner Brothers Theater and received an applause that lasted until the end of his credits. The movie Ambulance would not have been possible if it weren't for his contagious passion that swept through the individuals around him who were not only inspired to help him achieve his passion, but also find their own passion throughout the process. Arya's passion is so contagious that anyone who hears his story is inspired to not only find their own passion, but to feed that appetite to others. He is someone that has inspired me to find my passion. My name is Amelia Tristron, and my passion is the scientific process of discovery, research, and learning about infectious disease. How did I become passionate? Well, that's a longer story. Imagine a small girl watching National Geographic with her dad, not quite grasping what's going on, but intrigued by the world of unknown. Places like deep sea, caves, and space intriguer, and the endless possibilities they hold. This is where her interest in science begins. Now take that girl. Fast forward a few years to grade school, to science fair. I had this project, and the goal of this project was to see if cave formations could be restored by a quick man-made process. It was a great idea, but it never went very far in science fair. Years later, I was presented an, with an opportunity while studying biological engineering at Purdue that helped me find my passion and bring back memories of science fair. Three years ago, I met with my advisor to figure out my schedule. She told me about this amazing opportunity, a biotechnology class that allows students to discover a new virus and name it after themselves. I thought to myself, how awesome would it be to have a virus named after me? <laughs> and uh, how many people do you know have a virus named after themselves? Um, I was very excited about this class, um, which was sponsored by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute as a part of the National Genomics Research Initiative. Our goal was to help discover bacteriophages for a database. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria and are being looked into as an alternative medicine as bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. There are 10 to the 31st power of bacteriophages in the world. So in theory, if you go outside and pick up some dirt, you should be able to find something new. In this class, we were instructed to go find a soil sample where we wanted to find a bacteriophage. My professor told us to try to think outside the box, to try to look into areas that haven't been looked into. However, if you wanted to be safe and sure that you could discover something in the realm of the class, you could go into areas such as flower beds, compost piles, river beds, um, which are areas that bacteriophages have been previously discovered from. So I did think outside the box. Driven by passion, I risk not finding anything by going to a high-risk area, which means the probability of discovery is low, but if a discovery is made, the rewards are high. Now, I didn't think of where to go overnight. It took some crazy thinking, and I found out that there are caves located in southern Indiana. 
Blue Spring Caverns was excited to help out. When I told my mom I was going, going to a cave for a research project, she said, I suggest that you don't go, because if you remember back in grade school when you did science fair projects with caves, they just didn't seem to work well. <laughs> I did what every kid does and didn't listen to my mom. Uh, when I arrived at the cave, I felt like a real scientist. I was super excited, prepared to pick up some mud with a spoon and a test tube. Um, while at this cave, I learned that the mud in the cave has been around since the ice age. It's glacial mud. Uh, I couldn't contain my excitement because if I could find something in this glacial mud, it would show potential evolutionary significance. So I began testing my lab sample that day. For six weeks of testing, I could not find anything. But before giving up all the hard work that I had put into this research and this discovery, I decided to try one last thing and mass plate my sample. I figured that with more plates, the chances of me discovering something would be higher, and surely one plate just had to work. I set my plates out over the weekend, and when I came back, sure enough, one plate had plaques on it, which are clear circles of where the virus has infected the bacteria. I decided to name my virus Tristron 1 following my last name with the number one because I had finally found my passion and I'm driven to continue scientific ex exploration and confident that I will name many more viruses in the future. But like any scientific process, I ran into some obstacles. Since it had taken me much longer than my classmates to find a virus, I had a short amount of time to purify and extract the DNA of my phage. One student in the class would have the funding opportunity to continue their research the following semester to determine exactly what genes and proteins their virus has. Naturally, I wanted to be that student. I put every free moment I had into this work. The day of the deadline, my sample was run on a gel backwards, and I did not make the deadline to have my bacteriophage sequenced. I was absolutely devastated. I thought that all of my hard work was over, but the two professors overseeing the class saw my passion and determination and told me that they would be able to secure some funding. During this time, I had the opportunity to write my first grant proposal and receive my own funding to continue research on the Tristan 1 virus. Looking back, I'm glad for the way things turned out because not only was I able to gain ex important research experience, I was also able to find my passion. Finding my passion was not a simple thing. But when you set high standards for yourself, you strive to achieve them facing all kinds of risk. While you're passionate, you overcome all the obstacles that are in your way. Both my friend Arya and I could have been safe and done something easy for a class grade, to film something or to discover something. But both of us went above and beyond of what was asked of us. Because when you're passionate, you don't care what the people around you are doing. You strive to achieve what you can, because you want to make a difference. The way I see it is, when your passion is contagious, it sweeps through the people around you who are not only inspired to help you find your passion, but are also inspired to find their own kind of passion. I will leave you with this quote by W. Clement Stone. Always aim for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Thank you.